name is Shubham Bansal. I am a part of Tarito and uh, working for Co-Create. Uh, so Co-Create is uh, the building block, and one of the building blocks. Yes, sir, one second, sir. Can you speak, sir? Yeah, is it okay. uh, working? Yeah, go ahead, sir. Uh, okay. Okay, so hi all. My name is Shobham. I'll be demonstrating co-create. So co uh, and I work for Tarento. So uh, the what co-create is one of the building blocks in the entire Sunbird platform, like one of the key building blocks. Now, we uh, as the name indicates, co-create. Does so what is the first term comes in the mind after hearing this word called co-create building block? What it could be? Co-create. So that's the answer, sir. So uh, that's the answer. Like the need of creating co-create was when we are sourcing the data con content. So data is content here. So when we are creating any book, we want a lot of content in that book. So book has units. Unit has content, right? So th this is this was been the ed this was there in the ed session. So co-create a book is there. Book has units, and units has content. Now, if you stick, like some, some, some adapter comes and he adapts the ed, but then, that, then the book creation and the content creation will be specific to that adapter only. What if you want to source the, con uh, the content from everyone, anyone who, who wish to come to the con uh, con come and wants to contribute, how can they contribute? Like one unit, one chapter can have multiple explanations, right? So that is where the co-create comes in. That, uh, which means, you can anyone can come and contribute to us. Like if he has some content, he can come and he can contribute to us to us. We'll review and we'll publish. So this is uh, this is co-create in nutshell. So our agenda for uh, for co-create is, see, uh, we'll be we'll be we'll be starting with the portal UI. We'll be uh, walking through the architecture. We'll be we'll be going through the code flow, then we'll be coming to the co uh, the portal backend. The will be the, the architecture code flow, uh, code flow, and then the program services. Now program services are the are um, co-create services which we use. Now co-create service, what does specifically co-create service means? We'll we'll cover eventually uh, uh, in the in the in the upcoming time. So yeah, so I'll start with. Uh, uh, with the architecture, so this is program. Like if this is an admin, he he wants to source and program. Yeah, so he'll create a collection to that program. Then the contributors, then he'll assign to either the he can assign to assign their own contributors. Like if the program is organization specific, only those organization or those people can contribute, or any individual also can contribute by nominating itself. Now the co-create is divided into two parts, which is sourcing and contribute. From the sourcing, we source the, uh, the we create the uh, the project, and then we go to the contribution where the contributors can nominate themselves and start contributing to that content. How it is done, we'll explain it. So this is high-level architecture. Okay, just to. Just to rephrase what he has done, what he has explained. If you see here, okay, co-create portal. If you go to co-create portal, admin, there is a two port, uh, two entry points for co-create. One is a sourcing, one, one is, is content, content. Data, as he explained. Two entry points, okay. Now, whenever you go to sourcing, sourcing always requires admin credentials to to log in and all. Okay, most of the time, admin credentials. If you go as a normal user, you can't find anything. You can't do anything there. You can log in, but you can't do anything. It's a you don't have a creation project. You can't see your project. Nothing. Okay. How, Only, how admin created for this sourcing? The regular admin role in the Edka whatever admin role, the same admin role here, the same user. No, there is no registration. For no. Sir. Okay. If you see the admins today, how the admin admin users can be created for any states? How? Through API. Today, there is no admin creation in the portal, okay? Admin has to be created in the API because there's a secured one where if you give in the portal, like anybody can come and then do it, okay? Even the API level also, the guy who is having a 
system level admin access only that guy can create admin users nobody else can create, like others don't have that access even if you're calling it that API will fail okay so that's what uh, your implementation team or devops team who has a system level access they will create one of the user as an admin that guy can drive these pro programs that guy can nominate other users as an admin also in the portal you have that capability that guy having option to add more users and mention other users as admin and everything okay so, so that's how Same thing, same roles. Yeah. Same roles and same users. Yeah. So, users database between Diksha and Cocreate are same. So, whatever users are registered on Diksha, so that those can log in and register on our Cocreate portal also, they will have same roles, but depending on the roles, they will be performing different functionality. So, content do we need? So, content creator in Diksha are sourcing. Uh, no. Org admin in Diksha are the sourcing admin in Google. So those who can create projects or those who can represent their needs. So when we are saying needs, like uh, we are, uh, so he is uh, like creating a textbook. So I need, okay. so uh, he, he, he wants to create a textbook for 10th uh, standard. So he can project, uh, create heat needs like uh, give me contents for 10th maths uh, textbook, right? So he, it's his need he's publishing. So he's the sourcing admin. And now, uh, uh, after that, uh, then content creators and all those roles he assigns uh, later for his contributing org that he can assign. But the main part for the project creation is having admin role or sourcing admin role in his organization. So, before we go to co-create, okay, first understand why we done the co-create first of all. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is very clear to know, know why the co-create exists today. Okay. You see it today, I think most of you guys know that, right? Okay, workspace, there is a creation of the textbooks and everything. What is happening in the ad? They can, any creator, content creator or collection creator can go and create a content there, right? He'll go and create a content as one of the textbook and he start creating, it, adding a text, contents into the textbook and he can publish, he can send for review and publish the book. That's what the Edward follow. If the creation is happening here, why we need a co-create again? One more, the creation thing, right? So, the challenge today with this, the, when we published first time that this workflow before co-create exists, most of the teachers struggling to create a one book because that guy only has to create everything for that book, all the contents which is required okay, within one textbook if you have 50, uh, 10 topics. Each and every topic, he only has to create all the contents okay, with a different kind of dual topic detail and everything, he has to do it. Once everything is done, then only it has to get published, okay? So what happened is when we, the COVID hit, many textbooks was just a first chapter and second chapter was added. All other chapters was nothing, there was nothing. Because when the curriculum starts, the first chapters only happen, okay, they thought of, okay, adding other things in later. Okay, because that's not the first, uh, first month itself, they will not go all the topics, right? all the chapters, right? They will go over the first chapter. Then a lot of struggles the teachers are faced that time. So hence, what we thought, instead of doing everything that one guy is doing it, how can we leverage community? All other teachers contributing to the same thing. So, there are many teachers, right? Okay, each school having the same social teacher, right? Why all the social teachers come and contribute to this textbook so that the textbook will be ready faster? Not only one teacher is doing it. Okay? That's how the co-create came into picture. Now, you attach one textbook. For the textbook, you tell all the teachers Go and contribute your contents to the textbook. All the teachers from different places of who knows the subject, go and contribute the contents. Okay, now the guy who program admin here, that guy will review that book, okay, is all the contents are right, which is came from different, different teachers, okay. Then he will review all the contents, then it get published. So what is the advantage with this? Before it was taking one guy to do it, an entire book, okay, maybe two months or three months to create all the book. Now, all the teachers are coming in. Within a week or one month, the entire book will be ready now. Because it's not one guy. There are many, like, hundreds of teachers are collaborating now. Okay, to create one textbook now. Okay, that's what the advantage of co-create. Now, that's how the co-create came into picture. Okay. So, one more challenge there. Okay, textbook today. In the co-create, there is no creation at all. You can't go away and create a new textbook in the co-create. Always textbook creation will happen in the ed with the empty TOC. What are topics that I, I want to be in the textbook? Okay, as a TOC will be created. Now, 
को क्रिएट साइड द एडमिन ओके द समबडी विल ड्राइव द प्रोग्राम ओके नाउ आई वांट अ कंट्रीब्यूशंस फॉर दिस टेक्स्ट बुक दैट्स व्हाट 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 वी कॉल इज अ प्रोग्राम ओके now that program will be told to all the teachers okay now this is the one program is there for the textbook okay you go and contribute to this program now okay this textbook one of the textbook is attached with just empty tvc only topics being listed no contents are there now you guys will go and contribute to that okay so that's what the program concept and then attaching a tvc empty textbook to that program then getting contributions for that okay, that's a one use case now later it, it evolved it not only textbooks the courses came into picture and courses sets came into picture lot of programs okay get into more textbooks or more contents using this co create workflow okay that's what we called again as a vidya vidya dan okay our co create rather than calling as a only collaboration to with uh, other users okay so that's the co create came into picture now if you see that's what he is explaining in the co create portal go to sourcing first that's what he just showed showing there sourcing in the sourcing portal okay means is the same portal only one portal having two entry points one is slash sourcing one, one is slash, slash contribute. contribute when you go to slash sourcing you just log in if you are a admin user you can see create program option right. if you are admin if you are not admin you don't see any options at all there okay there is no list of programs there is no create programs it's just empty page for you if you are admin you can see create program or list of programs what you created already Okay, and you can go and modify the programs, or you can go and uh, edit the programs and everything. You can see the admin can do. Now admin is coming and he is attaching one textbook for that program. He is creating a new program, attaching a whatever program that he wanted. He is attaching that book, and he is publishing that. The program is published. So any contributions now. When the program is published, the contributors can go to the contribute slash contribute route. When they log in, they can see. what are the list of programs available publicly publicly there are the one programs and then maybe specific to nominations again program guy can manage how he want to drive that program whether he want to drive that program as a publicly so that anybody can contribute or he want that program to be controlled manner where only specific teachers only can contribute or specific people only to contribute or uh, or specific organization to contribute there are different options how he want to drive the program that will right. create having that capability that while creating the program you have an option to uh, to f to create the program in such a manner that what contributions you want you want only your organization users to contribute you want only set of users to contribute or you want some individual public, uh, pub public or you want to yeah. want it public anyone can come and nominate no one can come and contribute us to directly they first they want to no they have to nominate, nominate themselves yeah. and then uh, they'll start contributing we need to approve their nominations on the sourcing portal so all the content creation is ha happens on the contribute side all the program creation approvals happens on the sourcing side so see sourcing starts the program content it gets from the co co contribution and after the content is approved and published it got it 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 gets back to the ed this is only what is saying is once what are contents creating here okay i think i don't know whether you guys are at the knowledge sessions okay knowledge building block okay is nothing but a content management system all the contents managed by knowledge okay even the consumption side ed is also having all the contents right so many contents you can consume there is knowledge instance on the ed side these are two different infras all together okay it's not the same two different environments this is only meant for consumption okay which has a knowledge within it all the contents are listed here those contents can consumed by any users here here also the same way the knowledge is a separate building block which is its own existence when it is just coming and contributing all the contents go to into this knowledge repository whenever we publish admin is publishing the book all the contents whatever is here for this textbook it will copied into ed so that consumption can start for that things anybody can log into ed they can consume that books that will only happen on the pub, after publish until that nobody can see here the empty tvc always empty tvc here for all this it's not yet published it's still in the draft state okay this guy is publishing here when it's published that time only it will go to so publish state here after publishing the anonymous users can also yes anybody yeah, anybody yeah. can consume so it is yeah. then open forum for the from yeah. on the ed side yeah. anyone can do go and consume the data so for a program i can then add uh, those contents 
for any programs when I am doing yeah, what are, what are program? content specific to that program. Yeah. Suppose. Yeah. 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 The program is like tenth class maths oh, book. Yeah. Is this clear? That there's yeah. all the add, co-create, and like white key into picture, and then how the data flows between these two. So, okay. so if any is higher. Ah, yeah. So you told that contrib uh, contribution can be done by organization, set of group, sorry, set of user, and single uh, oh. public user. Correct. Hmm. So uh, set of user part of any organization or what I mean any users like okay. it's like uh, think like uh, one textbook is okay I'll try to repeat your question how the contribution what are different kind of contributions happen like one is a individual user contribution one is a organization specific contribution and one more is a nominated like okay maybe like only this guy is putting okay only you guys as any few users okay only those guys can co contribute there is no nominations at all also I mean I <coughs> See, organization nothing but, okay. Now there is some NGOs that exist to do this. Why don't you leverage that NGO? You put up that organization, only that organization users should contribute to, the, to this book, nobody else. Okay. You can okay. assign the program only for that organization. Whoever users registered will agree that organization. Those users will see this program in the contribute tab. Nobody else can see. If a public user, if you like it, you, you can't see that program at all for you. Okay, that's how the organization specific program is being driven. Okay. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions under this uh, architecture, like uh, at least at high level, how the co-create and it works? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Textbook. So then only you can attach. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There is no creation textbook, here. Okay, you can't create any textbook. Okay. Uh, I mentioned here textbook course on courses today. Uh, These are things what you can drive in the co-create as a uh, programs. So, so that uh, creation can be done by the admin. Uh, no, creator, creator, creator. any creator can, uh, can, can, can be done. Okay. Project on the sourcing side can be created by admin, org admin. So, the uh, org admin is the project administrator, like uh, you cannot ask, like if we take an example of a school or some place, you, no one can come and say I want to create a project. Only certain users has the role assigned that like, yes, new project can be started. Now you you contribute to this project like a program comes starts in a school so the teachers will contribute to that program that will be started by principal right yeah. so it's like the admin on the sourcing side can create the project for the textbook of TOC which is created on the ed side so, uh, source code, yeah, source code? sourcing sourcing, sourcing. Uh. Huh. So we are using knowledge. Huh. So correct. So we are using that code and uh, uh, doing changes in this uh, co-create. Hmm. Fork using Correct. Fork. So whatever you do in, in this environment, it will go always it's in this knowledge uh, okay. service. Which is separate service yeah. uh, than yes, it. Okay. okay. It is separate they, and this is this they, separate. They, 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 are, they are confused within the program and the content. So the program goes to the co-create. The content of the programs is stored in the knowledge. Yeah, that's good. I'm explaining about the uh, uh, coding level. Coding level. Huh, coding we level. are using the same code uh, which is used by knowledge. We are forcing uh, that in for uh, this co -creation. No, no, no we, we are consuming see. knowledge APIs. What is this knowledge? No. It's just APIs, no? Yes. It, it, has, it has exposed all the APIs to create a content, review a content, publish a content. We need all those services should be deployed to consume that APIs. This infra required that services to be deployed in the co-create environment so that you can use it. Like editors and all. Okay. So we are not. Two copies of knowledge we can deploy separately. So deploy separately. Yes. And, uh, That's right. One more thing I want to add is, uh, like we said, we, we, we want to, uh, uh, every time the uh, content or, or textbook creation happens on aid, right? And then only people can come and contribute the project to the col collection, whatever selected uh, while creating the project. But later on, uh, we also thought that ki people might come at, I am I'm having uh, content which is actually can uh, contribute a lot to your whatever project or whatever uh, textbooks you have. So we can create projects without collections also. And uh, uh, for that, you don't have to create uh, uh, textbooks on it. You can directly, a sourcing guy or a sourcing admin directly go to uh, 
sourcing portal logs in create project select the select as, as in says i want to create the project not for any collections and then he just create the projects and accept so the later later the he can assign that project to any of the collections yeah. so right right now uh, this is the one of the next use case hmm. okay where lot of question banks okay questions should come okay first of all like forget about which who will use that questions send all the questions first then we will map it based on the textbooks and all like other teachers will take care of it okay in that use case you can't really put a questions only for the textbook right okay we they want to send all the questions to the system first that's what the she said is individual content contributions okay there is only contents so questions as the contents coming to a system it's not mapped to any anything else is a library question question bank question bank. you want to create a question bank you, you try the program to create a question bank for one of the topic or whatever you guys go and create a question bank for this topic that's it nothing else let them create a question bank then the creator who is here or here they will take all those questions and adding to a textbook or wherever you want it later okay maybe some people want to try only question papers okay there is nothing called textbook and all they'll go to question what are the contributions came take some good questions from that prepare question paper easy easy to create instead of he creating all the questions contributions came from many people he is just looking into all the questions which is good and he is putting the question back here question paper here okay so that's the that's what she is saying is program without textbook attached is a only contents all contents you guys come and create Mm -hmm. and they uh, what if they say like uh, both of them say they want to publish so is it possible they can't say publish they can they request can send content for review yeah this guy the program admin he is the one who can accept that content whether the right content or not only one textbook yeah one textbook i mean because you 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 both are contributing to the same textbook right uh, uh, chap content to that like textbook when you go to the shop mm -hmm. you get one math book but different different publishers Hmm. Like you will have the like that we have the okay 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 i'll answer this so the project is is mapped to one textbook now one textbook can have multiple contents suppose the solution for a chapter 1 solution for an algebra can be defined in multiple ways right so one uh, so all this uh, content creators will will send the review will send for the review to the admin so they have con no it's not like only one it's up to him it's up to him it's up to the admin no. if it is relevant content for the book admin thing see now your your solution to the algebra is something else and my solution to the algebra is something else but what is needed for the textbook and he is the admin so he'll be uh, he'll be uh, accepting one uh, either he can accept like both the contents or he can accept one of the content if both are different ways of explaining the same topic hmm. both are explained different way but it's like good they were, they were both are really good both, both are explained different way then i know okay both are really good i will accept that uh, content as a sorry, 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 sorry. so two childs are there huh. one wants to go with the different approach of the algebra and one different uh, child wants huh. to huh. like in udemy you have uh, today udemy you, you search for angular yeah. angular videos you get 10 of them So it is like that only. Okay. Yeah. So mm. that's the pretty much on high level of so what is sourcing so, portal and all. Yeah. Okay. Here, just can you just go to the architecture diagram like how uh, how right. the sourcing portal is structured. The add portal and all. Then you can go to the code level. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is pretty much same what you explained. Okay. Yes. How the building blocks, one of the building blocks, being used to the whole thing. Oh, just I'm sorry. I don't know why it is getting blurred. Yeah. Uh, any questions on the flow which we are going to discuss, uh, which we gonna deep dive, like what is sourcing? what is contribute how it is coming to sourcing how it is going to contribute and how the contribute is going back to sourcing and sourcing is going back to add 
So, is this process cleared enough? No limit, no limit. So, like n number of n number of teachers can contribute. Yeah, yeah, it will see that. I am the one who is approving nominations, which is coming. Yeah. You are your teacher, you want to, you are, want to, you are sending a nomination, okay, I want to contribute to that. I am the one who is accepting it, okay. When I accept, then you just start contributing. So, this is high level again the like sourcing architecture like what is being used and uh, what we are going to explain. So, the first is the client app which is Sunbird co-create portal UI which will walk you through about with how what is sourcing portal, what is contribution uh, contribution portal and these are like common libraries uh, which, uh, which, which, which we have already covered which has been reused. This is there on the uh, microsite, this is all there on the microsite sir. So, <laughs> So, uh, front end libraries like con common consumption libraries, SB form, C CSL, SB styles, telemetry SDK. Now, telemetry SDK is uh, all these uh, libraries we have already been uh, covered covered on the ed sessions. So, these are the common libraries which ed is also com uh, sorry, co create is also consuming. Now, the API, la uh, API layers is Sunbird co create portal API service. Now, this service is specific to co create. Now, these are, this, uh, these are the program services which is specific to co-create which is like when we talked about the agenda. So, the third topic is covering the API services which will cover the late in the later in the coming sessions like that is the program service. Now, coming to the uh, uh, API managers learn knowledge, Sunbird observe, Sunbird inquiry and ed. With these are the APIs which we are consuming. So, with the part of uh, uh, with the part of back end we have program services which uh, which contains the programs which we create on the co-create like when someone is sourcing then we cannot go back to it directly to Diksha we need to create keep it at some place so that is where the uh, the Sunbird program services coming into and we are creating from the creating creation of the program to the publishment of the program okay so we'll go through the UI. This program uh, service is deployed only in the co-create yeah. environment. It's it not deployed in the ed because it doesn't have any programs thing, right? Okay. Yeah. ML programs. Before this, we had a separate session, right? That's a manage learn ka program. That's a different programs. They have their own services and all to manage. Co-create is a different environment altogether, which is not in the ed. The different infra altogether. That is having a different service called program service, which is used for co-create point of view only to try the programs. Don't get confused this with the uh, MLK programs. Okay, that is a different ML programs. But concept is still the same. Okay, they are also driving the programs within a program observations and everything. The same concept here also. The, you initiate a program, for that program you add a textbook, for that textbook you get a contributions. Okay, the concept is still the same. So, <coughs> I'll explain. So, the key thing here I would like to highlight knowledge is the only one service, one building block which is duplicated. Other than knowledge, if you see the learn, um, observe, we are still leveraging the edka learn and observe because the user created in the co-create, the same user can log in into ed also. User created in the ed, the same and user can log in into co-create co because we are using the same learn so building block, user management, learn building block in the user management one. Observe is a data pipeline. Whatever we do creation, whatever data going in the data pipeline, Whatever we do here, it will go to the same observed data pipeline, same reports and everything can be generated by the observed uh, data pipeline. Okay. Sunbird inquiry. And uh, Sunbird inquiry, Sunbird inquiry is again duplicated similar to knowledge. Okay. Sunbird inquiry is built on the top of knowledge only. Okay. Which is a specific to question and question set use case. Okay. That's a duplicate, again duplicated here, here also one more instance and here also is one more instance similar to knowledge, Sunbird inquiry. Cool. Is that clear? The dependent building blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ed is a key thing for us because we are leveraging a lot of Ed framework, some of the APIs of the Ed, which channel and everything, some of the things what we need. We are still leveraging Ed APIs for that. Okay. We are not creating the same thing again here. We are leveraging Ed APIs because already created here, right? We want to leverage some of the data from here. 
That's what we are using the Ed APIs to do something. So uh, I'll uh, walk you through the UI now, like uh, what is contribute and sourcing. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is uh, the Vidya Dan VD and co-create as it is. Now there are two entry point as I'm as I told. First is the sourcing. Sourcing. Now here, here we are also using the same lang uh, same uh, uh, key clock login, which has been used by Ed. That is why the person who is logged in on the Ed side can come on the co-create. So the uh, the login mechanism, the session creation mechanism is similar as that we have already gone through in the Ed side. Yeah. So here we'll go through with this. We'll start with the sourcing. Case if the login functionality is stopped in the show, so here also it will be stopped. It will stop. Yeah, it will stop. Yeah. Because same language. Yeah. So I have my. This is my org. See at the top. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So these are the timelines for my project. Suppose I want to start the project 10 days back, so I can save it as a draft as of now if I want to make any uh, any updations to that. Now, I can also, what content types I, I want the contributors. Yeah. Why can't select both options means? Uh, some reason I want to nominate. You want to nominate? Yes. Yeah, so you can nominate it from the and public first site, no? Can be public user. Some can be in public. Achha, some of them you want to specify. See, public, if you want to nominate them, they either they are from your organization or if they are not from your organization, for, for you, they are public. Why not at the time, at the time, why we can not use both? That okay, so uh, first, uh, first we understand how contribution works, okay? So suppose you are logged into on contributor portal. It is nothing but uh, doc somebody dot on contribute. Okay, so I'll, there, I'll it, huh? When you logged in, so when a person logs in, firstly he, he uh, sees a pop-up where he can see I'm an organization. Suppose you are the admin of or you are creator of organization or NGO, you can say I have set of people to contribute. I'm an organization, so I'll log in as an organization. Suppose if I'm a teacher, I'm a first class uh, or, or, or teacher, I want to contribute as an individual. I don't want to be part of our organization. That is your choice. So you get a pop-up where you can see if I'm an organization, if I'm a uh, normal user or individual contributor, so there, when they are saying public, so it's like public, like anyone who has con who has nominated or uh, logged in or enrolled as a, as a, as a individual a contributor creator. or contributing organization, anyone from this this set of people can contribute to. The second option, what is they are saying is, who has nominated, so, so who has enrolled as organization or individuals, let me choose because I, I might have created projects uh, projects before and I have uh, I might have contributions right so I know yeah uh, contribution for from this NGO was good so I can directly so I, I want contributions from your side or I can contribute I, I want contributions from this individual so I can directly say uh, select these people and I can and they, they will get nomination they will get uh, sorry for emails or something and then they can directly come to this project and they can directly that, that I understand. See, yes, sir. Ah, okay, to answer exactly your, your thing, see if it is public, okay, the program is public, whatever you expect the specific people also can join, and individuals also can join, why do you want both? I mean, it's already public, whatever two people, what you want to target, even they can also join there also, and public also can join, both are coming in, why you want to assign again two more specific people? Admin is someone who is approved. Yeah, he's a approved. No nominations required. No nominations required. He nominations will only nominate, he'll assign users to that project. From selected set of contributors, no nomination will be required. He will already he will be already nominated. Already, already nominated. Okay, okay. Let, let's take an example. They can also come at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Okay, we can do it with the public, uh, anyone from the nomination process. Okay, anybody can come in. Okay, okay. okay. No okay. Of, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Reason, when you say you, he just explained that. Huh. Okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll give you an example. Suppose your, 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 uh, there's a half yearly examination of your school only. So you will you'll be needing the contributions from your organization only. Uh, take an example, okay, like I, I am conducting an exam, okay, huh. I want to get some question papers. I just, first time I rolled out to multiple organizations, you guys give me question papers by preparing for this uh, subject, hmm. okay. So all three guys give the question paper, different question papers. I felt one organization given the question paper is really good. So next time my choice will be all three or the organization which is given the right, uh, the better one. Huh. This is I want to target that then. That's what? the organization only. 
next time i don't want everyone to like, i want only that organization to be contributed to my forum nobody else because that organization give the better kind of contents or better kind of questions what i need okay so i want to target only that organization okay guys who is belongs to that organization only can contribute to this forum nobody else well it doesn't have other organizations it's only your organization so other organizations other organizations if we are anyone. yeah what is it which see yes, so they so there you can get. so if you want to specify something within your org see, only then again, it is all these things are specific to requirements okay, like, okay, don't uh, they are requirements okay like use cases, use okay. Case, okay. this use case this, this okay. forms are if they want this and that all these things okay just go and build it okay. today is like this maybe the requirement comes go and do the change okay. okay today is not that way. okay today the feature the as they like this this is what it is given okay okay Is still you have any doubt? I mean, um, I was just telling you that from other organizations, from anyone can be. Ha, public uh, means anyone like any, uh, any NGO, any school who is uh, there on our platform <laughs> as a content creator can come and nominate themselves. Yeah. This the admin, the the owner of that project will approve the nominations. Then they can start contributing. Now, by the terms contributing means. You you can start uploading your data for that textbook, like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Okay. Now, uh, once you have uploaded the data, you will send it for the review. Like um, uh, same, process. Uh, same, process. same process. Yeah. 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 You were saying something. Okay. So. Hmm? So this is the content type, which kind of content I was saying practice question set and uh, explanation content. Now there's, these are some guidelines which I can upload if I want to Why, for the content creator, like what kind of content I'm expecting from you as a video, uh, video PDF, uh, sorry, as a PDF file I can upload. So uh, yeah. So I'm not uploading it as of now. So the target collection, these are like TOCs for the uh, I am adding. So this is the TOC which got which is from the Ed, and uh, this is board is Pune, medium is English, class is class four. Selecting for your book. Yeah. So your project is published. Class tenth maths. Your project is published. Now, don't open. Okay. Now, you can open it. Huh. Uh, if I'll go with this user, this will be automatically nominated. Uh, that's what. No. So for that, I need to assign it. No. First, uh, okay. I'll create. I'll just copy the program ID for my convenience. Okay. So here, uh, here are the nominations and uh, which is already there. Here are the reports assigned users to that project. Uh, contribution dashboard. What is the contribution status and the digital textbooks which we which are there. Now we can download the textbook details also in the when when in the in the process. Now I'll go to the contribution portal with the other user. Yeah, No, no, this is in the program it's service. In the Postgres, uh, Postgres program Postgres service. Uh, so the, the, the back end which we said na, ki program service. So the program service is on the Postgres DB. So all this. So So you need you, you go to the program, okay. Hmm. Now he as a program creator, he chosen uh, two options given. Okay, only you can contribute this type of content, which is a question set contents or explanation content. Okay, the creator can choose what kind of content he want to contribute. Okay, he he'll select or any one of it, and then start. Okay. Start. Uh, he want to addition to the start. And There's only one unit inside that. Okay, yeah. means chapter level. Uh, 
what is after which editor he wants to do now the expl uh, the practice set question is now this is the point where the editors from the normal knowledge comes in and we are consuming them like what we the, the consumption of the external libraries we have already covered in the ed section so it is similar to that like practice ocean set if i open it will open the collection editor so, so this is these are like again long forms which i'm not going now so i i'll, I'll start diving into the code now is it clear the contribution process okay. this regular contribution somebody some process the same thing here there no no difference yeah okay. so any but question is a public or, but here is a specific to text book that's the only thing here okay. uh, any question still now for the overall you i think so i'll start with the source source code uh, sorry huh okay 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 <laughs> okay okay so uh, we have a similar project structure i'll uh, open the git that will be better so we have a similar project structure which we have already discussed in the ed which is like uh, the back end and then the front end so front end is in the client side so this, the uh, front end is purely on the angular and our back end is on the node and uh, then we come on to the source we uh, this is the pro angular project structure these are the modules N these are the used modules which we are using in the uh, in, in uh, co create now the the the, the co create specific entry modules uh, is the co is the contribute and the program now program is the service sorry a program is the project like sourcing part is loaded in the program so first as soon as this user comes and hit it comes on to the uh, root level like uh, using uh, routing we decide uh, 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 which what you need to load first like sourcing contribute there any changes in the b5 and 6 sorry See, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the Diksha is still on the Angular 9, and we have uh, we have upgraded to the Angular 14. Mod, no, 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 no. So this is like uh, the module. Uh, mo Just a minute. Five point. okay see the yeah yeah so it's all the same now if you'll see in the, this is the basic angular uh, routings uh, first we authenticate the user uh, uh, after the login the, where he wants to land in if he is coming to the sourcing we'll, we we and uh, we open the program module if he coming to the contribute uh, uh, for the first time it is join organization admin contribution portal so the contribute module is open So the pro, the pro, the, uh, now the first step routing is the module routing, which module we want to route. Now within the modules again we have a lot many uh, in uh, lot many steps. Now within the uh, within uh, sourcing where you want to go, like you want to create a project or you want to review a project, you want to join, uh, um, uh, you want to create a program, edit a program, join organization or uh, you, your your nominate uh, nominations what is there contribution uh, what org organization list and all these things this is the internal routings of the sourcing side right the whatever the functionality sourcing is having this is the is this is the place where user will come first first it will go to the parent route module level routing which is lazy load lazy loading uh, for the for 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 defining the module which you are loading then it will come up to the module specific routing so if you haven't given so by default your project list has been uh, 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 program list component is uh, is opened now program list component you see is we have introduced uh, we have uh, uh, imported from the shared feature 
now the reason uh, I'll, I'll come back I'll ask okay where it has gone I'm not used to of it yeah so uh, if there are only two there are like two modules of sourcing and contribute then why do we have so many modules here now the answer to that is the sh some are the core modules, some are the shared features, some are the shared modules and some are the other modules which we are integrating in our other modules. So these modules are, in, uh, are highly integrated into each other as per the angular, uh, angular uh, requirements. Yeah? So program list we are uh, uh, importing it from the shared component and first it will be loaded to the program list component. Well, let's go to the program list component. Why it is not uh, program list component? Program list component. So this is the component which is uh, which uh, which will give you all the list of the programs which is already there, like we saw in here uh, mm, this side sourcing. So this is the program list component which will give all the programs. Once you start creating the program, uh, uh, it will start routing and going start going to the other programs. And this is where we start consuming the other services. So the init so. Uh, this uh, we initialize the framework. We check the user is contributor or not. Then, uh, then where is the on it function? So actually, this uh, this component is being uh, this component is be is being used in sourcing portal also in contribute contribute. portal also and uh, program and that is why it is common and that is why it is actually uh, uh, shared. And uh, that is why all the functions are there. Like if you, if it, he, if he is a contributing org admin or he is a sourcing org admin, and according to his role, the projects are loaded. So we 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 actually load all the projects from the program service because as of now, the, all these programs are residing in the co-create backend program services, which is the Postgres DB. So we have a po, uh, program services uh, program services call uh, get the context uh, g all the context which we call here. This is the init function which is, uh, uh, this is the function to check if the user is contributor or not. If it is a contributor then load has all the programs. So this is where we load and we set the active tab. Now there are like three tabs which, which is the user's tab, user needs to land in. So this is here we, uh, 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 we define. So this is the program called get program, program list by role. So first we describe after describing it if it is a user or not, then according to the roles of that user, we fetch the programs. Get to, so uh, these are the API, uh, these are the again some uh, methods which are calling the program service. So this is how all the content is being uh, fetched at when you are logged in as per your roles assigned to you. So there are like three kind of roles in, uh, uh, for the so for sourcing side. Either you can be an organization admin, you either you can be a content creator or you can be a reviewer. Now everything needs not to be uh, reviewed by the admin. Admin can assign users uh, roles to the other users that you are a reviewer. Now if you pass, uh, you pass, then I'll uh, then I'll review or you you. you you approve it, it is good, fine for me, right? So there are like multiple levels of approval, two levels of approvals. Either you can, uh, that has been decided at the time of uh, creating the program only, that you only wants to approve it, like admin, or you want reviewer only want to approve it, or you want first to reviewer up, uh, uh, review it, and then it will come to your review. Two level review. Two level review. Two level review once you approve, then it will go to the second Yeah. So, when we are saying first approval, it's on contributing side. So, contribution side, as we have said, it's contributing organization. So, yeah. uh, 
on contributing side we said there is a there is an contributing organization right so contributing organization only also has admin also has creators also has reviewers so when a contributing org admin opens a project nominates for a project he can say from this set of people irrespective of their role i i want him to contribute to his project this project or i want him to review this project so once that is that the then the published draft as you said right the the draft is there then uh, the reviewer comes in so that set of uh, whole process published process is happening on contribution side also when contributing org admin or reviewer publishes that content it comes to sourcing now sourcing guy sourcing org admin also can have a reviewer but here only a reviewer can publish directly says i i am approving this uh, content whatever contributed from the contributing org org organization and that would directly go to diksha so here there are two level pro two level of uh, reviews happens one on contributing side one on sourcing side for individual contributor the content directly come to sourcing side because it does not have any contributing organ uh, any organization reviewer or some, someone right so that directly comes to sourcing a sourcing guy whether he is a admin or reviewer can directly approve the content so same uh, same kind of a pro, uh, code flow we have it on the contribute side also okay so for this uh, uh, sourcing review process any questions for uh, what uh, we saw here then we'll uh, like sourcing side is pretty much this only so any questions on the sourcing side huh reports i yeah, will come I mean, if they say then i'll come no reports Sorry. Yeah. So organization reports. So collection level content gaps. Uh, so these are like the other of uh, the. Okay, so the collection level content gaps. Uh, this is the description for this. That uh, details uh, which it provides the collection level. If there are any content gaps and all the folder level, uh, like the content and okay, the content, the book and which has multiple folders. Once you start creating a content on the collection editor, you can add child and all those things. So reports for that visitor report like who is coming and uh, come uh, 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 what, like you have visited some things some people have visited of your organization so these can be downloaded from here this is like project level funnel report for the project so all of uh, these things are there i mean there's some infra otherwise i could have downloaded in uh, content detail report so these are like organization reports which we have on the contrib uh, on the con co create side and then we have project level reports also i just show you that uh, content level report digital textbook level content report and the textbook unit level content report which is like the unit see a book has a unit and the unit has the content right book and content are this uh, uh, like, uh, is the skeleton only now the skeleton level report if you want they are like uh, unit level or the textbook level see like textbook unit then the content now content level report you want it for the unit or for the textbook this is these are the reports is a real time or a batch yeah? real time Sir, only yeah, real time reports right yeah the download okay you can download them Textbook means that it will be so much uh, collection level. So collection level. How much time it takes? Uh, these are not real time reports. That's what all these reports are batch process thing. Every day it will be keep on generating a reports based on the configuration which is there in the Druid. 
the reports are configured in the Druid. That will be keep on generating the reports. You can see always there is no request, right? Uh, admin is not making a request. He can keep on downloading daily basis. Like, okay, daily basis, the request will be available. He can download the today what is the status of this report. I'll show you the report okay, system. How many contributions have happened? Uh, the reports he will show now. Okay, what data will be there report? But there is no request. Admin is not making any request. By default, it will be generated in the batch process every day. We can download what is today's latest changes, what happened today's in the programs. So Sorry. This is again using the Sunbird report service. Sunbird report service, yes. That's what, uh, uh, as, a, as I told you, observe data pipeline that is generating all these reports. Okay. Configuration also happened in that level. Just a minute, I'll show you the reports. Just give me a minute. You see reports of contribution, like suppose I have contributed, so the admin is now uh, taking this see how many contributions came in, what is the status of those uh, contributions. Total contribution. number of contributions. Yeah. How many people are contributed, how many people are nominated to the program, how many are rejected, how many are approved. These are different kinds of reports. Okay. That's what, there are four different kinds of reports. One is for them to see the country status. Uh, country status nothing but a... What are the status of the content? Like, how many contents are still in the draft? How many contents are accepted? How many contents are rejected? One report will tell you only content status against the pro program. One more report tells you against the program level. What is the status of the book? Okay, book. What is the status of the book? How many contributions came to that book? Okay, how many are accepted? How many are rejected? For the book. Okay. One more report for the unit level. In the book, there are different units. On that unit level, for that unit, how many contributions came, how many contributions accepted, how many contributions rejected. That's the one kind of report. That's the funnel report, what we call yeah, funnel I'll just show report. You. One oh. more report is overall programs. In the VDN, how many programs are running? For that programs, how many are total contributions, how many are total uh, rejections? Okay, that's the one more report. There are, these are different so. specific use cases again. These are use cases came from the field, only those are reports are available. If, if they ask one more report, Start building the new report. Okay. I think the report is uh, having some issue. Not open. Uh, CSV is not opening in my. Okay. That's 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 okay. Because data track yesterday we covered all this. Data. Ha, data track we have covered. The same thing is explained in the data track also. So yeah. Any questions on the report side and the sourcing side? The yes. code. Show the code. So actually, why the CEO? My concern is we were having uh, we had to struggle for some of the reports in the last two three months. Huh. So what is the challenge? Uh, see, it, it's simple. The database. They, I'm just accessing data and I, I need to get the report. But, but the when we have that flow right to Flink, uh, Kafka, and you no, know, so. There, uh, the uh, reports are not getting generated as expected. Yeah. So in that case, what could be the challenge? See, okay. the flow is yeah. defined, right? Yeah. So simple flow, you have, uh, because of uh, uh, no? uh, Sunbird, you have that flow. And this uh, the report should get generated when I'm gener uh, generating a batch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So typically, what, what is the challenge? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'll give the example. Get? I'll give the example before we, uh, I will answer it. So today, conference is happening here. You have to come to main entrance. From the main entrance, take a lift, first floor, and come to this. Mm. What happened if the lift is not working? Can you come to conference room? So the, I have to fix the, the channel should be right. Huh? If uh -huh. any one of the channel is blocked, then you can't come to the room. So that's that's what the, that is where happening. Either the flink, there is that's what, any one of the job is uh, not uh, properly uh, running. It it's stuck. Okay. okay. Because that is not running because of the configuration issues and all today. The problem is the service is not a, at all up and running. It stopped. Okay, nobody is monitored. Now, the, all the requests came and it's blocked there only. There is no further process of that. Now, you have to make sure it's restarted. After restarting it, is all the requests are still valid now. Okay, that's what the struggles where the report generation process today. Okay, so if the channel is always rightly configured and is always working, then there's no problem. That's it, it's keep on going, keep on, keep on, keep on going. If you blocked and you restart sometime, then everything load is coming at one time. Again, the server will be busy that time. Again, there's chances of failure. Maybe the data is not correct properly that time. Okay, again, it will be fail. 
that's the challenges you guys are ending up today the why the reports are not generating okay so some places one of the pipeline is stopped yeah, okay. or it should be a little flexible so that uh, if i want to have uh, run a report for 10 programs instead of that uh, i will mention run only for five programs See, so is this the daily basis? You you are not confirming that. It's by default. It daily generates for you. You see the four reports, right? There is download option only. By default, on the backend system, the cron job will starts on the midday, whatever is configured. That day, it will start generating a report. Okay. Okay. You need to trigger anything. There is a cron job running on the server. Okay. When the time hits, the cron job starts, and it starts sending a request to generate a report. How we can do? That? See, who 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 are the audience? Typically, NCRT is an audience, okay? NCRT, or they want to generate reports. Mm -hmm. So, we give uh, admin a There is an option in the Jenkins also. You can trigger from the Jenkins. You can trigger from the Jenkins also. That's option also there. See, all the things, it's there, okay? Now, even for the uh, Jenkins, if you're triggering, if the job, the road is blocked, okay? as I told you, lift is blocked. You do it, crown job, or you do it from trigger for Jenkins. The lift is not working, you can't definitely reach to the Main, uh, like conferences, right? That's the problem. First, you make sure that pipeline works properly. If the pipeline works, you don't need to worry about that. By default, it will be keep on working. So, in Nista 3, right? You, you guys have worked Nista 3, two, yeah, right? Nista 2. So, yeah. what are the challenges you... you See, Nista 1 and 2 is pretty much certificates, is the major workflows. Okay, major problem. Nista first is a heavily certificate-driven and then lot of enhancement on the data pipeline also all together okay because that was the spark machines were used there was no fling jobs at all the sparks itself was not able to handle that much load okay like it has to generate around uh, 10 000, more than 10000 reports per certificates per day certificates per day okay it's not able to handle that much load within a time span in the night, midnight the job will be running it okay so that none of the users are uh, using the system Midnight, within three hours, supposed to complete. It was running till morning. Still, they are not able to process the 10,000 certificates. Because the tech stack itself is not capable of doing that much faster. So hence, we moved to Spark 2, again, all these things into Flinks. This all happened in the data track, because mm -hmm. you guys will not be knowing it, all these things, yeah, okay? Yeah. So hence, the, the entire tech stack being changed to Spark to Flink. The Flink has a logic of async things, and it will not a non-blocking thing, kind of thing. It will not even wait for that incomplete, okay? The queue will be keep on, parallelly can happen, okay? After moving that, the pretty much Nista 2, like we didn't see the challenges of the certificates. It's worked smoothly. But in the first version, a lot of issues with the certificates. Okay, because of, it went to pipeline, it blocked, because server is too much busy, it's not able to process at all. It's restarting, restarting, whatever restart, whatever the request in the queue, it's gone, okay? Again, that request is not served at all. Only next thing request is served on this request, whoever is waiting for a certificate, he will not get a certificate. Because this study has happened that time. Those are problems what we end up with the Nista one. Okay. Anyhow, like all this is the data tracks uh, yeah, yeah, problems. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. We have to ensure that all of the jobs and pipelines are configured. They are in place. Yeah. If start. everything was smooth, then there's no problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's real time policy. Yeah. Everything has to be generated you know, in the last night or whatever. Correct. And only it will be available. Yes. So it's challenging could be because of the load. Yeah, or because of the load is can be a chance. Or memory or some or the other thing. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so the table which we are using, that is like SV, desktop, plugin, or it is like a database? See, that's not a table. Okay. Go back. It's not a table at all. Which table you are talking about? The yeah. program list. Yeah. The program list table, whatever is showing it. The table. Go to the UI. Sure. Yeah, that down. Uh, wait a minute. Sorry, just a minute, just a minute. That one was right. We can only be here. I think my, I just got logged out. Mm -hmm. oh, Go to your doc. Huh? Yeah. Go to your my projects. Yeah. This, this, this table, a, no? Is not a table. Is it a table? Is it looks like a table? So it is table. It's shown table. Oh, okay. Okay. Table tag. Table tag? SB table. SB table. SB form, SB table. There are two things. Don't get confused. Dashlet is a something which is a, what we explained in the last last call ML thing. Dashlet. That is for the reports especially. So Report can be in a table format. Uh, but but uh, in 
that section, the table they were showing with the like SP decimal only. Mm. So, so that's why I'm asking you, this table is also they are using the plugin or any separate table, table tag they are using later. This is SP forms only. They told two things they are using. They are using SP table and they are also using SP dashlet. SB dashlet is especially for reports to show because SB dashlet have a capability of different kinds of report to show based on your data. Okay, you, you pass the data, you give a configuration for this data, show me bar chart. For this data, show me pie chart. SB dashlet by default shows you or line chart, whatever you want it. It's just a configuration to that. You don't need to write any code. You pass the data, for the data, you show me this kind of what kind of report you want to show. That's what SB dashlet is. SB table is meant for only table views. Okay, like there are a lot of options in the table, uh, option the filtering and everything by default comes with the SB table. You don't have to write any of the code for the table. Whatever columns that you get it, by, by, by the, any of the column you can do filter by default. That's what SB table having that capabilities. Okay, so that's what we build two different libraries, SB table and SB dashlet. Dashlet. So, Vedu, uh, is there a, a, a wiki or a thing that will explain all the which tells, which tells an adapter hmm. of co-create, like which thing jobs have to be set up in order to use it effectively. Which flick job has to set up? Go to microsite, open the flick jobs, what has been. These are still under uh, progress, okay? The some of these we just added it, just to know, okay? If you, if you see the auto created two, okay, this is used for publishing of the question set. Now, what is the job at all? The other building block has already documented. Okay, who, who is handling, handling this block? Okay. They are handling, they know how to configure this job. Okay, what is the data coming to this job? Okay, how it, it's working and all, other building block. We are just consuming We it. are just consuming, consuming that. Consuming. Okay, we just listed that. And the co create thing, what are jobs are responsible? Auto creator V2 is publishing of the question set. Content auto creator is to publish the uh, contents, regular contents about what you have on bulk upload. What is the bulk upload? <coughs> so, content auto creator job, uh, uh, there are two use cases for this uh, job. So, one is a contributor can co contribute content uh, in bulk. So, he can upload the CSV, the bulk uploader. Uh, the, this job comes in place where the import API is getting caught. So, whenever the contents are uploaded or created in bulk, at that time, we are calling import API. Import API in backend uses uses this content auto creator job. Now, when now the contents are coming to uh, sourcing guy, right? So he can approve the content, uh, single content or multiple contents. At that time, also import API comes in picture. But this time, he is publishing content from our uh, co-create portal to Diksha portal. So this time, this content auto creator job needs to be present on Sunbird because we are calling import API of Diksha to publish a content from our co-create portal to Diksha portal. So in case of co-create, this has to be present on uh, co-create portal. And if, if you are using bulk upload, and if you are publishing over consumption portal, this needs to be present on your consumption portal also. And auto creator is like a publishing question set from co-create co portal to consumption portal. There are only two jobs today for the co-create I mean the definition, the installation of these jobs will be on the yeah. on the yeah. learn side, learn building block. Yeah. So the covered in the uh, microsites ka fling jobs is kisne covered on these things. Because front end guys don't need to worry about this thing. Okay, who like how to configure it? Front end guys don't know it. Okay, we learn to do this because it's a pretty much interesting thing. <coughs> we have to worry about everything, so that's why. Yeah, friend, we should know what jobs <laughs> to be triggered. That's the key thing on the front end. We should know so. what is the back end is happening. Yeah, right. okay. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to we'll go back to the source code for uh, con uh, we will go back to the source code for contribute. So, any questions on the sourcing uh, reports? Anything till now? Okay. So the again the so uh, the flow for the contribute is same as sourcing. Like wh when you when you come to the, uh, the when you hit like local uh, local host or any domain slash contribute so first will decide first it will uh, land on to the par parent routing that is app routing app routing to decide uh, to decide whether uh, what it is like where which module we want to load 
right the contribute if you if you come on to the contribute it will redirect you to that particular module folder lazy load that folder it will come to the picture like contribute it is coming so once the contribute uh, contribute contribute comes in will contribute module, uh, contribute module. we will load the contribute module this is not working properly will use the contribute the contribute module and the contribute module has stone dependencies and then it will read uh, again it will read uh, decide what where it want you to where you want to go i mean what page you want to load like my enrollments will show you the enrollments you have been in my your content will show you the contents which is your in the program program id which means it, if you open if you go to a particular program organization list or a normal uh, a normal contribute a normal contribute is again the uh, again the program list component as we sh as as we saw in the sourcing side the program list component now the list of the program is been consumed by both as my friend uh, explained that uh, the program list is a shared component shared feature so we have kept it in the shared feature module uh, there are like many other uh, uh, mod uh, 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 components like the, the uh, like them like the program uh, program detail component so it is again like if a user is seeing a detail of any of the program whether it is on the sourcing side or on the contribution that it is a shared feature so those are in this uh, in the shared feature uh, those we keep on the shared feature now core core are the headers footer switches <coughs> everywhere like we gonna uh, keep it in, on the angular load which will be there with our every routing so those are the core mo those are the core modules so that is the reason we have multiple modules so we have uh, like in uh, like an a standard angular project to divide to as many components as we can and here we are consuming other libraries like for the for the like editors from the knowledge side for library consumption we saw in the ed like there are two kind of libraries which is uh, which is angular which is like javascript based or the typescript based the typescript based libraries which can we can configure in the package json and the angular uh, the javascript libraries we call, can also configure in the package json and define in the angular json the path of the node modules so this is how so now coming to the contribute uh, contribute side again it will go to the same program list component and it will decide it will check the user roles now the reason of having a method to get the programs according to the user roles is th is this like we you your session id decides whether you are a sourcing admin uh, so you are coming from the sourcing side or the contribution side and what are your the roles and the programs assigned to you which will be presented on this co consumption list and then you can proceed further so this is uh, pretty much on the contribute side you if you want me to uh, go on to the services explain the services again we the, the services which we are being using as of now is the program service which is a uh, program service much sorry <laughs> This is it, no? So this, these are the services, uh, service file on the Angular side, which is being cached on the node servers for the whitelisting session set and everything. Which uh, we 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 saw how the backend works on the edge side. The similar way we have the node uh, running parallel with Angular, which is actually whitelisting and catching the entire user session. Uh, on the back end, uh, on on the node side so this this is the intermediate for uh, catching it so search registry everything which which happens map user to the contribute org uh, organization reg uh, registered so these are the services which are been you which the program services which we consume 
from the program service of the co-create. Now, program service of the co-create is a separate identity altogether, which has been modu which has been uh, strictly uh, used for the co-create only and to generate the reports. Microservices, microservices. Yeah. So this is the for the contribute. Any questions till now? So that we'll we'll start on the back end now. So this was the po uh, code flow, code uh, code flow, and uh, the the reason of sourcing and contribute and contri uh, the co-create explanation for the f on the front end UI side. So the agenda, the the three point agenda agenda one is being uh, was still here. Any questions? Any queries till now? On the UI basis of front uh, uh, UI co-create UI front end. Okay, yeah. So what we covered is one of the uh, client apps. Okay, the what we saw on the top. Okay, co-create portal UI is a what what we covered now. Pretty much the two only entry points. If you go to module folder of co-create, sorry program, you can see the sourcing code entries. All the routes from there it will starts. One is a contribute. If you go to module of the contribute, from there all the routes which is there in the Angular, from there only it starts. Only two modules what you want to refer in, in the code base. Okay. Uh, so and if you don't find any component in those modules, see the import section, you'll, you'll find the module which from where we are importing that module. It's not like any dependency. Uh, yeah, dependency. This is uh, Angular, okay. Angular, from where pure it's Angular. Which is just need to refer that path to find it, whether it's a shared feature or whether it's a core feature module. Okay. okay. That module. Uh, so, 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 if you want to install this co create on your locals, there just follow and stick to the line by line description on the micro side and the versions and the software versions. It will be done. So this, uh, this pretty much is a portal UI thing is covered. As I told you yesterday, we are missing one topic yesterday, editors, right? Okay, uh, the players we covered yesterday, mm -hmm. and the editors, the collection editor, how it works, okay? Because pretty much we are touching today, textbook, courses, question set. It's all again collections. Okay, how this editor is behaving to, to, to create that, okay? That's something that uh, Vaishali will walk through on the oh. editor, uh, how the editor code and uh, how it's been organized, okay? What are the features within the editor, the code level, okay? We'll not go to workflow anymore, okay? We'll go to code level to understand what's the code of the editor, quickly. After that, uh, we'll break out for the T, then the two more topics we have to cover, the portal backend, which is for the co-create, how the portal backend is configured, and uh, program service. Okay, two things after T, t break, we'll cover. We'll quickly finish the editors, okay? Before. Just a minute. Just similar to other NPM libraries that we are, editor also an NPM library. Pause, pause. But because it's a key module, okay, which is have a lot of capability of creation. Yeah. Just a minute, I'm, I'm giving her the mic. Right? Yeah. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, Can you, you pause it? Because you pause it for a minute. Pause it, pause it. What do you want to open? Just open this seat and collection editor to open. So uh, currently, collection editor comes in picture whenever we are creating any collections. Okay, sorry, uh, I am Vaishali. Uh, I am representing Techdi here, and I have been uh, part of CoCreate since it was uh, like launched. Like uh, the program was launched with that, end, right? So I am since there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so collection editor is one of the library, npm library we are using in both Ed portal and CoCreate portal. So it's basically uh, used. Hmm? to create collections, textbook, courses. Uh, yeah, so this is actually the micro site right now. Okay. And these are the editors we are using. And from that, we are having the collection editor version to whatever As currently we are using. So in, during the ed session, we got to know that we have different versions of the editors. Right, the collection v1 editor was on the JS side, which is not deprecated. We are not supporting it. Uh, we are just consuming it 
for the sake and the collection v2 uh, collection editor version 2 is purely based on the type script and and can be consumed by any of the libraries which is an more of an npm package so you you, you can install the npm package you just uh, you need to pass the configs that uh, the how which we saw in the edit session the window configs the config file of the json and then this entire uh, collection editor will be open in your iframe so here also we just saw that the collection editor was open uh, the minute minute i start uh, uh, see this is how this is not the uh, this is the collection editor again so this editor has been opened in the iframe right the, the config uh, yeah. you want to say that? Uh, this editor being used for all different type of collections okay you can call as a collection type as a textbook collection type as a uh, uh, course collection type can be question set today part of this code wise also it is uh, very much segregated and uh, differentiated so yeah. so everything has been divided into the small small components and you face any issues on the components uh, on the editor side because is this is the time when we are consuming the knowledge knowledge libraries to our to us so yeah, you can also configure this into your uh, local very easily because now this is a TypeScript library which is an NPM package. So yesterday we saw when the when one when one adapter came. Suppose you want to make some specific adaptation level changes f on the editor side, so you can actually configure this on your local and use it from the from your Node modules. You can do all the configurations. This is like the configurations, the setup of this, the local we have already covered in the edit section. So, yeah, these are the like uh, the collection editors and bird, how to set up in the local and the configurations you need to pass. I mean, okay, I'll demonstrate from the step by step. So install it, uh, like I said, it is an NPM package. Now, if you're forking it, you can publish your own NPM package, make it your own personal NPM package and do all the things, or you can contribute it to, uh, to us back. Then uh, it will actually come, uh, don't forget to install below peer. So these are the dependencies for which you need to install first. Yeah. Then create a copy requirement as sets, like the set, uh, uh, create a copy required uh, asset folder then this to include then these are some styles and scripts for the editor specific you need to include and uh, then the add question cursor implementation like when your question is connecting no so you need to point to that particular question cursor so it, it is for that and uh, then you just need to import that module you're done send input to the render collections each and every thing is been so uh, that lib editor, right? So that tag, HTML tag, we are saying. So with that, that collection editor gets loaded in your uh, uh, apna npm HTML. And uh, okay, scroll down. Scroll, scroll down. Yeah. Okay. So. When we are using collection editor in our component or in our uh, sourcing, in our project, so this is what we should use, this HTML line. And we need to pass editor config and editor emitter. So editor config is what we are passing to uh, question, uh, collection editor. So there, there are set of uh, key pair values, right? So we have to pass it. Editor emitter is whenever you are doing any action on editor. So it should be cached in our, uh, so in our sourcing code, right? If uh, it's getting published, it's getting live. So I should know the action, whatever happened in collection editor in my code also. So that is where the editor emitter listener events come in picture. Just scroll down. Okay. So uh, down, down, down. Yeah. So. Uh, telemetry con context is uh, what uh, whenever uh, a question set or anything, any po any player or any t editor we launch, so telemetry is sent, right? So,
for that telemetry, these, these are the properties we need to set. And uh, these are the actually default values and if it is mandatory or not. So everything is here, it's given in description and uh, it's actually pretty much uh, uh, what uh, understandable while reading it, uh, reading only. So environment is what uh, is collection editor or questions editor. That is specific uh, for collection editor we need to pass because collection editor as of now can be used as uh, can be used to create collections also and co question sets also. Though we have question set editor uh, separately, but in co-create and in Sunbird ED portal, we are using collection editor to launch question set editor. Yeah. Uh, just, okay, this, uh, how many of you are getting what is telemetry context and why are we passing it? Why we have to pass the telemetry context to the editor? Sorry? Event, telemetry event to generate? Capturing, capturing. capturing or generation? Capturing. Who is capturing? Who is capturing? The system. Storing, right? Storing. Okay. That's what I was just asking the questions, guys. Okay. Editors doesn't know anything, okay? Editors will not even generate a telemetry if you don't tell what is the user ID for which user? Editor doesn't know who is the user logged in. Does editor knows? Because that's happened in the portal. Editor doesn't know who is the user. Editor knows what is the DID, which device, the unique ID which is coming. Editor just doesn't know. But all this information is a mandatory for telemetry event to generate. When you are anybody generated a telemetry event, these are the mandatory things that anybody can figure out what happened for that user in that session or something to analyze it. These are the key parameters for telemetry. That's why portal, who is using the editor, who is adopting the editor, they have to pass all this as an input to the editor, as a configuration. So that when the editor is generating telemetry, it will stamp with all this data. So that you, you know what has happened within that editor. Okay, for this user, for this session, for this DID, all this analysis can be done. How much time he has done, spent, okay? While doing it, what are the errors that he faced and everything will be in the telemetry events. Okay, so that's why they are saying that, editors is saying that, you give me telemetry context. What are the information required for telemetry? Okay, you pass all the parameters to me. I will generate a telemetry events for that. Okay, whatever you are sending me. If you don't send, it will not generate telemetry events. That's simple. Okay. So that's what all these properties that uh, is all documented. What is this property mean for what? What is this property? You can see, okay, I don't want to go to more details. SID is a session ID. Use a session. Like when the session is login, that's a session ID. That description is given. Whether it's required or not also, because telemetry requires some of the properties a must. If you don't pass telemetry, event will not generate. Okay, that's what required property is mentioned here. And then P data, producer data. P means P nothing but a producer. Who is producing the data? Means your co-create is producer data. Right? Pro producer is a co-create. But environment is a editor. Okay, that's what she is explaining about who is the environment and who is the producer, okay? All these details are given here very clearly. Just if we go through this, which is a mandatory or not. That's a telemetry context. Okay, we are passing it. This is the same thing for our editors and players also. Players also doesn't know all this thing. Edit, portal is passing this context to the players as an input. Okay. There are other properties. Yeah. You want to explain? Okay, fine. Okay, scroll down. Okay. Let me quickly go through the... Other than mm -hmm. telemetry, what else we are passing? Editor context. Next one is editor context. One is telemetry level data you passed it. Editor level context also you need to pass it. Some of the things editor, you tell me all this thing, then only I will do it. Otherwise, I, I, will not, I don't know what to do. Okay, that's what the editor context. Okay. There's something called framework. Editor is, you are not even making a call of framework to know what is the framework. Okay. You tell me what are the framework that you are, you, 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 have, you got it. I will use that framework for the content creation. Blindly. I will not make a call to get what is the favorite details or nothing, nothing. Okay, that's the sum of the details what the we are passing as part of the uh, editor content. Go up, go up, good luck, good luck. Yeah. Framework and use uh, the program ID, okay? And all these things we are passing to the editor, okay? Editor just using those properties while creation of the content, the metadata properties of the content, stamping with this data. Just a metadata because it is not making all those calls to get all this data, metadata level, okay? Whatever data that portal knows, it's passing to that editor. At the time of creation of the content, editor is stamping with all these properties. 
Okay, that's the editor context. Yeah. So you can see again mandatory required or not. Okay, all the other things. The mm. third one is a yeah configuration. Conf configuration is a key thing of what are the options required in the editor now. What options you have to enable? What options you have to disable? Okay, how the editor should behave? That's the configurations. Because in the Diksha use case, you have to enable some of the capabilities. In other use case, they don't know what all the capabilities. They want to behave editor differently. All the editor behavior is a configurations. Okay, if you see the configurations, okay, editable fields. Okay, what are the fields should be editable? Okay, again, maximum depth. Maximum depth is nothing but a tree. Okay, T in the TVOC you can see, right? Mm -hmm. How many level the TVOC can go? Okay. Is it only first level you should allow, or how many levels you want to allow the TVOC to create? Okay, dial code minimum length. What is the minimum length of the dial code should be? Okay. Dial code maximum length. Okay, all these things are the properties that editor is defined, configurations that editor is defined. Okay, we are just passing that configuration to the editor to make it work. Okay, again, editor having the primary category. What are the primary categories that you want me to allow to create? Okay, there are a lot of properties like that. Okay, so again, all these things are documented clearly in the editor repository. What is property meant for what purpose and everything? Three properties: telemetry context. Okay, for telemetry events to generate by the editors. Editor context. Second one is a editor context. Just to say, content level tagging, the metadata tagging should happen, right? What is the program ID? What is the channel? What is the framework and everything? That is a con uh, editor context. Third one is a configuration. Configuration nothing but an editor how to behave. Okay, that is the third object is pretty much the contract. This is a contract given by the editors. Whoever is con using that editor, they have to pass this contract properly. If you don't pass the contract, it doesn't behave properly. There will be some failures. That's what you can see. Some use case is not working. Some use case is working. OK, why is it at all? Just go and refer the configuration. What are the passing it? That's the key thing. Even again, CSP provider and everything is coming here. Okay, As part of configuration, only you have to tell who is a CSP provider to be used by the editor, how the file to be uploaded, where. Everything is a configuration. Is that clear? This is a key thing to understand, Okay, because I was always pressing the contract is a key thing to understand. If you don't understand the contract, that's about the problems. Okay. Clear? Here it is. On the code level, is pretty much as I explained. Dial code feature is there. Go, go to dial code folder. You understand what is the feature of dial code. You go to header folder. You understand what is the header takes of the editor. <coughs> Have an understanding of what is the ability of a content editor? Okay, that question, yeah. content editor. Okay, one second. Specific content editor. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, In the collection editor, usually, it's uh, just a TOC, as I mentioned. You can create a TOC. Ha, exactly. On the tree. Okay. Exactly. The meta, not the meta data. The TOC of it means what chapters. Yes, okay. Yes, I've seen that. Okay, that's not the right. TOC. This is a meta data form. What is stored in the Neo4j database? Okay, content tag. What is the name of the content? What is the description of the content? What is the framework of the content? BMGS. Exactly. That's so the metadata. Meta exactly. Okay. Yeah. Then, the next one is for every chapter, what are the contents to be added? Ah, okay. So the you have created the chapters. Okay. okay. You have to add a contents section to the chapter, right? See. Uh, book. Then the chapter again. The section came. So as as I at, uh, click to click on add child. If I'll, if I'll click on add sibling, it will again add a section. <coughs> then the next one, under each and every unit level, you have to add some contents. Mm -hmm. There is something called add from library. The, you can see create from new or add from library. Means add from library means there are already contents created. Okay, so you choose that content and add into this. Okay, okay, no. Or you go and create a new content here directly by uploading a PDF and all. You create a new uh, uh, content and add, attaching that to the unit. Okay, okay, okay. Both options are available within the editor. You clearly see the code level, okay, the library, if you search for library, what is the library module, mm -hmm. okay, how it's getting the data from the server to get to know what are the contents to be shown, filtering options, you want to filter all, all the video contents, PDF contents, right, right. all those things available in the library. Create new is a new content you are you choose what kind of content that you want to yeah. create. I mean, if you choose multiple choice questions, again, the signature. Entire creation happens here, the new question creation happening here. Okay, you create a question and then add into a unit, chapter. That is secret, right? This one. 
Uh, these are security attachments. Yeah. Okay. So this all code level easily. You, you go to component module, you get to know what is that code. Okay. So I don't want to get to that code. I want to explaining about the key modules especially. Okay. Can you go back? So again, editors, these are, we call as a tree, a tree, a tree fancy tree. There's a TOC, what we call. And there's a metadata form. Okay, these are all form driven today. What options need to show here? There's no hard coded. It's all form driven. Okay, in the form, you disable, I don't want to show these options. It will not come up here. In the metadata also, these options will not go. In the metadata of the content, while saving also, these options will not go. Any new requirement comes, okay, you want to add stamp with a new property. You just add uh, update the form with the new property what you want to start. What is the type? Whether it's a drop down or is input or radio button. You configure the form, it will reflect here and save it. That's the metadata. It's all dynamic fully. Okay. And the next one, add from library. You can just fill it and show the add from library. Just library. <coughs> yes. Add from library is the study of selected all all the mandatory are federal already. If you see the Sunbird thing, we disabled all these options. We use the Sunbird only name and uh, description. No, no it's it's all these options. We configure the form to show only those two properties. But in Diksha use case, they want to capture so many properties and all. They enabled form is configured with all these properties in the Sunbird. Do we have the form the form API is same, but data is hmm. different. Okay, within the what data you configure, that data will be rendered here. It's not coming. No, it's okay. disabled by the config for the. <laughs> so this uh, add from library here is disabled from the config that this user has to create new data every time. He cannot consume. Uh, go to some other question. No? Which one? Yeah, I'll go to go some, some other question. Otherwise, just I just want to show that capability. What are that? So yeah, okay. I'll uh, I'll go to this to my only content types, explanation content, upload sample, create new explanation content. Achha, this is explanation content. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad. <coughs> okay. Uh, only once. One thing I would like to highlight is the co-create. The forms, okay, in the co-create, will be driven by the primary category definitions. How many of you know primary category definition? Primary right. category definition. Okay. Primary category and primary category definitions. What is it? Huh. Okay. Any of you guys? Other guys? I the question, question set. <coughs> huh. These are called as the primary categories. Okay. What is primary category definitions? Anybody else? There's, there's a primary category. That's the basic thing to identify. What are the names? Okay. The textbook, collection, question uh -huh. set. Okay, those are the primary category names, which is very programmed. Diksha want what are names they want it. Okay, that's what are names. The one more thing called primary category definition, object category definition. What is it? Anybody knows? Guys, you guys are using it so many places. These are the things. Object category definitions. The developers especially. Okay. Object category definition is having a lot of properties of schema. Okay. For well, example, textbook, you have a schema defined for the textbook. Okay, you want to alter the schema altogether. You want to add two more properties to that schema. Like today, textbook schema is defined with uh, uh, without publisher. Assume that publisher is not there in the schema at all. Mm -hmm. Now you want to add a publisher as a new property into metadata. You need to go and update the schema for that. This is an option. You can go and update a schema also. Without doing that, use the object category definition. I want to add a new property called schema within a schema. Schema object, there is structure for that. In the schema, you go and define new property publisher. Mm -hmm. Now that publisher will be available for the, all the textbooks what you create. Okay. Without updating a schema, without making any restart of the, any services. I think Amit was saying this. I got this from Amit Bansal. Yeah. So that was very interesting. So that's, that's all. Okay. Lot of things without doing any backend changes and everything is config driven. Okay. Or API driven. That's the object category definition. One is a schema. One more thing is a lot of forms also defined there. But then, I mean, my question would be like, how do you then process the reports at all? I mean, like if I want to fetch a report, they also define the same API. Probably depend upon the schema itself. Ske no, not a schema. They are definitely always a database. 
database, if you see read that object, that object having this new property now. Other object doesn't have a new object. The read object has to be yeah, read, yeah, read object is correct. Those are there in the node. No, graph is, that's what the advantage of a graph. Oh, okay, okay. The graph is having three nodes before, three properties before. Now you have one more node, which is having 10 properties because you updated the schema with some new properties. This node having 10, but other nodes having only five. Okay, so they are reading from the graph, right? Always the read is happening from the graph. Based on that, they are generating reports. Yeah. So this is add from library. So add from library. You can see again. Okay, if you want to search the contents, you apply the filter. What kind of content? Like you, you are creating a book right here. Collection is nothing but any one of it. So okay. So then, when when we see picture, how like I mean, how do you guys you know? Or, 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 I mean, you or us? How do we decide whether we want to change the schema or just keep on adding the things in this in this? Uh, see, that, that's a very very conscious call. Okay, you should not go and change wherever you want it, right? Okay, because. If you change wherever it works, it will create a problem. Okay. No. See, when to update the primary category definition, when to update the schema is something that is a key thing. Schema updation is required if it is a common across the platform. Like entire platform should be the same wherever your textbook create. That time you go and update the schema. If it is only specific to your channel or specific to one of the use case, then you go and update in the primary category definition of that channel or primary category definition is always again specific to channels again. Some states want my textbook created with my state name always. Then you go and update in the primary category definition, not in the schema. Correct, correct. Makes sense. Okay. That's the advantage of, that's what, okay. the conscious, you should know when to, when to update also on these things. Okay. Um, and pretty much all back end things are covered, okay. But I'm just giving the heads up here as well. It's, um, the upload from library is like this only. Uh, the question is not having that. Uh, thing no because of their servers so image you can also upload it from the library so these are like kind of old images which we have dummy these are dummy data so you can use any one of them like the the, the similar way you can go to the question set and you can filter it here and uh, apply and you can take it from the library as of because of the dev environment you can see the filter options again like when you want to add some content to a te textbook chapter right you have to filter by I want, because they, this book is specific to some uh, Karnataka state uh, or medium English or class 10. Then give me contents which is available for Karnataka state and the medium is English and class 10. Only I will look into those contents and then I will uh, only add which other content relevant to that. That's mm -hmm. not the library. Library is nothing but you have too many things. You filter whatever you want specific things, then get add the, the, the content here. Okay. So here it, here it comes. Yes. <coughs> Yeah, you can see the preview of it, okay? No, just set to show me the preview. Okay, now this is what the previews. You can see before you're adding, you want to see preview. How it, what is that content? In the editor itself, you can see the preview. Can if the content happen. is good, then go and add, add it. Or if you're not good, see is there any other content which is good for the same topics. Okay, that's what that like library capability. Like you find a content which is really good, which you want to add it as a creator. Okay, if not exist, you go and create a new one. Okay, you, you find nothing is good, okay, that you feel something is, you want to create by yourself, go and create a new content, or, as per your imagination, and add that thing into that textbook. book. Okay. section. Color of Apple, this is what the question we You see the preview. Uh, Before he sent for review, as a creator, he want to see the preview of entire book and everything. That's mm, what. It will come. He will see the preview of the each and every things. If everything is good, he will send it for review. That's what all this collection capa collection editor capability. All this code level, I don't want to go through. You can easily find module by module, you can find out the code. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, bulk upload. Bulk upload, nothing but you don't want to create. You want to upload everything from CSV. All the contents are created. You are given the links of that content. So this content, this content is like this. Mm -hmm. You upload it. Intent TOC will pre-populate for you, right, right. if you use a bulk upload. Okay, you need to choose manually. CK editor, as you see the CK editor being used, and that, that's what is the CK editor to specific things. Asset browser is a like that, but images, all the images list. Okay. Same. Okay, there's nothing different. It's just by naming itself, you can get to know what module is what for purpose it's being used. Is it clear? The collection editor. The configuration is a key thing contract. 
that's the only thing what you guys really worried about it okay if you know configuration then you know what capabilities are available within that i mean every configuration is available on every github and microsite okay cool yeah that's pretty much on the editor side any questions there it is okay see any any capabilities not exist today try to add as a contributor like as i told you a couple of you four kit add a new capability and then use it that for for your deployment and then you contribute back so the next version you can use that the contributed back that's how you have to really think of it you, you may not be having all the capability what are new use cases that you make getting from the field today like maybe uh, diksha having some new capabilities new requirements if not exist you have to really build that thing on the top of this right i had one question on that side so now that sunbird is on the 6.0 Can we like uh, upgrade specific building block without moving the entire thing on 6.0? That's not recommended. That's not recommended. That's not recommended. You can do it if you know the knowledge of that will not affect anywhere else. Okay, it will only specific to that. Then if you have that exact clear thing, then you can do that. Okay. Until you get that knowledge, very we will not recommend that thing. Yeah. Because if you if you update it, you don't know where and where what the interactions will fail with it. Okay. Okay, it may fail. Okay, it may get update, but interactions, everything, all the interactions should work. Dependency should be very clear. Very, very clear. clear. Yeah. yeah. If you know, it will not affect anything else. Yeah. Then we okay. Okay. And also, we will not recommend directly to upgrade to from 5.1 to 6.0. There is a level by level because there are a lot of version, there are configurations to be done. If you do in 6.0, some of the properties will 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 not be defined because in the world version we already defined in that release what are changes you have to do, what are configurations you have to give, it's defined there. Without doing that, if you come to 6.0, that configuration itself is not there. It will not work. Okay, that's what even Angular suggests. Okay, do version by version update. Don't directly do directly in the last version because you want last version. Directly <laughs> don't. The upgradation of Angular. Any any software is like that. Okay, if you, version by version is recommended. If you know very well, then you can go with last version and then play with it. Lot of problems and everything. Try to solve the problems. Make it work. It's easy to upgrade from Angular 9 to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If you go from Angular 9 to 14 directly, it will uh, break will a lot, lot of things. A lot of things breaks. You have to go and fix a <laughs> lot of things, or you have to make sure everything goes at the end. And uh, okay. sometimes you may not able to fix it also, okay? Uh, because there is no solution for that. Okay, they are not recommending that. You will not find any solution. Something if you have a block at there. Like something was deprecated on Angular 12, but now you are not referring to the 12 documentation. You are coming to the 14 directly, so like that. Okay, yeah. With this, we break forty. We'll break it forty. Okay. Later we'll see the portal backend. Okay, how this portal backend and problems of this is working. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry.